Hello everyone, my name is Broken and today I have something very special for you. If you have issues with inconsistency when it comes to freestyling, then this video is perfect for you. One of the biggest reasons for inconsistency is the setup, and that's what we are going to look at today. I came up with a setup that you can use for almost every shot. It doesn't matter if you want to do an air dribble, go for a ceiling shot or even something more advanced like multiple flip resets. With that setup you can do all of them. And you just have to remember those key points we are going to learn today. Before we start with the setup I quickly want to go over the camera settings. Especially mine because I get asked about them a lot. So I wanted to show them and also talk a little bit about why I choose them. Let's start with them. FOV on 110. Why? In Rocket League you want to make sure you see as much as possible, so that's an easy answer. Distance 250. Why? In my opinion, 250 is the perfect distance for almost everything in terms of freestyling. You're far enough away to see your whole car during complex movements like multiple flip resets, but you're also close enough to make precise touches. Height on 80. You can test it yourself, but with 80 height you are really well in line with the ball, which makes movement in the air really precise, so it's perfect for air dribbles, ceiling shots and flip resets. The same thing applies for the angle on negative 2. It complements 80 height very well, so those two combined make moving through the air with the ball feel almost natural. The other points are mainly personal preference and don't have much impact in my opinion. Stick with what you got, copy them from me or your favorite freestyler. With that out of the way, we can start with the setup I was talking about at the beginning. I would recommend to download a training pack where you can practice the same setup over and over again. This is the one I'm using and the code will also be in the video description. At first I'm going to show you what you're learning today and what you can use that setup for. I know what you'll probably think now. Wait, that's it? How is that supposed to help me? But hear me out, because in that short clip there is a lot to cover which you could easily miss. It doesn't look like much, but there are a few very important key points in that setup. First, rolling and ball speed. With rolling you just have to make sure that the ball rolls almost perfectly flat. Every bounce can cause weird acceleration when it rolls up the curve and therefore mess up your setup. Ball speed. This is a big one. You want to make sure that the ball has the right amount of speed when it rolls up the wall. You can see on screen now how it should look like. The ball needs to be fast enough to roll up the wall at least one car length above those banners but not too fast, otherwise it will crash into the ceiling after you touch it. Something that can help you are those fading lines that leave the ball once it reaches a certain speed. You want to make sure those fading lines either don't show up at all when you go for a setup or they disappear when the ball approaches the wall by simply not accelerating anymore. If the ball rolls at the perfect speed, the next important parts are when and how to touch the ball. Let's cover the when first. The short answer is as soon as it leaves the curve and rolls up the wall while the ball still has upwards momentum. If the ball is already rolling down again before you touch it, you might get into some issues with inconsistent power. So how can you make sure to execute that setup as consistent as possible? Well, surprisingly easy. If you know how to roll the ball with the perfect speed, you simply have to match the speed of the ball on the ground and also stay really close to it. If the ball gets closer to the wall, you want to create a tiny bit of distance between your car and the ball by letting go of the gas button for a moment but accelerating right after it again with a bit of boost. We know now when to touch the ball, but what do I mean with how? Very simple. You just want to hit the ball with the middle portion of your car. If you touch the ball with the left or right corner, you will send it further away and it won't stay in line with your already existing driving path. 
This can be useful in some situations, but most of the time it is more beneficial if the ball has the same direction as your car. If you are able to apply all steps that have been covered before, it should look something like this. Before we talk about what you can do now with that setup, we have to cover one more thing. Depending on how far you are away from the goal, you need to approach the wall with a different angle. If you are close to the goal, as shown in this clip, you can almost drive straight towards the wall. If you are further away from the goal, you need to approach the wall with a bit of an angle and also make sure you hit the ball at the exact same spot as shown before and also with the middle portion of your car. Now we will talk about what to do after the first touch and those slight variations you have to make for individual shots. To make it a bit simpler, I will use only two categories, ceiling shots and shots where you want to stay below the ball, such as air dribbles and flipper sets. One important thing, in 99% of cases you shouldn't use brake on the wall. Using brake on the wall means you lose momentum which you have to gain again by using boost, therefore kind of wasting it. Now the differences come into play. If you want to go for a ceiling shot, you want to accelerate immediately after the first touch, either by driving up the wall with boost or jumping off the wall and fly to the ceiling. As a rule of thumb, the faster you are on the ceiling, the better. Best case scenario is you're already falling down again while the ball is still moving upwards or reaches that floating point. If you go for a shot where you want to stay below the ball, you want to jump off immediately after the first touch. What you do then depends on what shot you're going for. I will cover those variations in an upcoming video showcasing different possibilities. Let's recap the most important parts. The ball needs to roll perfectly flat on the ground at the right speed. You follow the ball very closely and match his speed. Before it rolls up the wall, you need a bit of distance between your car and the ball and then accelerating again, hitting it off the wall. Depending on if you go for a ceiling shot or a shot where you need to stay below the ball, you either accelerate really fast to the ceiling or simply jump off the wall after the first touch. And there you have it guys. This sums up everything you need to know in order to have a super consistent setup that you can use for almost every shot. I hope that video helped you out. If it did, make sure to subscribe because similar videos are planned for the future and you don't want to miss out on them. Tell me in the comments what helped you the most or if something was unclear. Enjoy the perfect setup and have a good day.